we're going up to a surf spot. So I'm um, going offline and I go and surf and have fun. And I grabbed an apple and the pin I disinfected and I just shoved it from my ears. I'll feed the family this one. Oh, there she goes. <laughs> Seaweed guys, works a treat, huh? We are an Australian family that made our boat Catalpa our home and set off on an adventure of a lifetime. We hope these little videos make you smile and inspire you to chase your dreams. Subscribe to join us in our travels as we share our life on the sea. After living it up on the land, we headed back home to Catalpa. Alright. Home sweet home. So, we've been away for eight days, so it hasn't been a lot of sunlight, so I'm just concerned with our batteries. They should be alright, it's only that we've got fridge and freezers and that running, but let's have a look. See what the batteries are on. Oh. Can't fit there though. Did you have a good holiday, did you? <laughs> Must have had a good holiday. <laughs> oh, what do have we got here? The undies. We have a oh, nice. When you get back to your boat, guys, that's what you want to see. He's 100% full. So that was my main concern. So bilge pumps are working, uh, fridge freezer, everything stays cool. Everything seems good. No one attempted to break in. I set a few little things here. So I've left it in Benoa Harbour and um, it's tough times for a lot of people here so I wouldn't have surprised me if something small may have been taken like a fuel can or something uh, sort of was prepared for something um, because we've just left it in a harbour but um, it's all good must have a bit of good karma these hatches <laughs> open it's a bit and uh, get some air in here and we're back on Catalpa we met up with another family on a boat and they have the same age kids as us so that's fun hanging out so we're just leaving um, Banoa Harbour, been there for a little bit. We're going up to a surf spot, so I'm um, going offline and I go and surf and have fun and enjoy, test out all our dive gear and then make some, uh, hopefully my phone's ready and then we can uh, head off either to Raja Ampat or back to the Mentawais to see what the weather's doing, but we're very excited to go and get some waves. We've got waves here a couple of days, but there's heaps of people. We like it when it's uncrowded and there's no one around, so that's what we're going to do. We're going surfing. So we're just going along. We just said we just slowed down and he thinks there's something around the prop. So guess who's going to go and jump in the water? Do I have to jump in now? Is it not going to motor along very good? Might be current. So when we came in, we were with the current, we had wind, it was everything lined up perfectly. So we're hoping today we fluke the same because there can be some uh, gnarly currents around here. But we're gonna have to pull over. <laughs> so you call it when you're driving a boat, pull over. <laughs> Not really, you just, you just stop. <laughs> We're going to have to pull over and uh, check our propeller. Good news, the wind has picked up a little bit so we got some sail up and we're now doing like four and a half knots. Four, five? Five knots! Still got the engine going but yay, it means we're not going to get there at midnight tonight so we're going to make food, we've run out of water. We have to make water too. Do a little bit of washing got it all dry instead of uh, I think what was it before 10 hours it's now about five hours till we get there so we should be there about five o'clock five six o'clock which is great good news hopefully the wind either picks up or the current goes less and we'll get there quicker but, yeah, so far so good I spoke too soon So we had, um, we were going along, <laughs> we finally picked up speed, put the sails up, we were going four to five knots 
And then Lee came and went to make some water and he opened up the engine and found some plastic in the water strainer. And everything's a little, little hot, a little bit warm down here. So we are now adrift on the ocean. Our ETA is about 15 hours. <laughs> We're going one knot. <laughs> but he's going to remove the plastic out of the strainer which did its job because that's what it's, it's designed to do right yeah. yeah this hasn't actually ever happened to us before has it no. which is very surprising because there is a lot of plastic we are at the moment just outside of bali there is a lot of plastic in the water but uh there's some in our strainer We've had fish in here before, but we've never had plastic. <laughs> yeah. What is it? All right, we're gonna get going. We arrived after dark and woke up to this beautiful place. I wake up from the sunshine on my face So dehydrated, don't know what to do I was in my room and I had a pin and I put it through my So I have two holes and I put it through my second hole And I came out because last night I wanted to pierce a third hole in my ear Because this one's a little close to that one And I just wanted to like make it a better hole and uh, I was going to do it yesterday on our way here, but Dad told me not to because we are going to go swimming. So then this morning I put this pin through that second hole and I came out and he was like, oh, you got to film that because I said I pierced it myself. And I'm like, oh, he was fine with it. So then he just went to the toilet and I grabbed an apple and the pin I disinfected and I just shoved it through my ear. So now I do have a third hole. <laughs> so we'll see his reaction in a second. <laughs> I was going to pierce it for Bella yesterday, but you talked us out of it. So now I just have a pin sitting in my ear, and it's but all like the way through. But like I said through. to Bella, when I pierce her ear, I just put some earring through and it would be finished, but now I'm going to take that out and put an earring in, so it's not really convenient, Bella. So I did it. Now I have three holes. There's three holes. It's one thing when we pull that out, the skin will grow back over. No, it won't. Okay, we're not doing that. Put the earring in it. Mum put the earring in, and it's all good. Dad loves it. <laughs> Kids have been surfing this morning. Bella came back starving. She's got eggs, Mexican eggs for breakfast. Oh, so good. Is it good? When the boys go spearing, Bella and I are usually the boaty, swimming with Dory or our sub board collecting the fish. The boys saw some good fish, so the excitement was high.
Living on a boat, we have to take care of our own rubbish. Unless we are in town, we throw all our food, scraps and perishables overboard. And when we are in remote places, we choose to burn our paper and plastic. So mum and dad headed over to the beach to burn the plastic. We know it's not the best to burn, but for us, it's better than it ending up in the ocean. It's so classic. Every time you make me nervous and I lose my words. It's been a while since I forgot the most simple words. One, dig your hole. That's death too. Have a beer. Oh, we just cleaned the fridge out so they're not the coldest, but hey. So you get this little sponge weed, you put that down like this, you aim it at where you're going to burn, maybe a little bit more kindling, get your lighter. Oh! There she goes. That's seaweed guys. Works a treat, hey. So that's another bag of rubbish down. Um, and probably about four bags of rubbish within a couple of square meters of here. So what are your thoughts? Did we just burn our rubbish or do we throw in another four or five bags every time we do it? Is it good or bad, right or wrong? I don't know. Let us know your thoughts. Somewhere. <laughs> Down below. Down below, up top. <laughs> There's so much here, it's just unfathomable. But it's anyway, all those little cups. The plastic cup company should be... Uh, illegal. Illegal, I think. Um, I reckon from here and another 20 metres along, you could get probably six garbage bags full of plastic water cups. <laughs> 